Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to talk to you about the Piopoli Moai. So this is the Piopoli Moai. It's an SLA 3D printer, which basically just means you pour in resin, there's a laser underneath with mirrors, and that reflects it to cure the resin. So the resin is specifically formulated to be reactive with light, and so instead of using a print head with a nozzle, it uses a laser and a tool path, and that just reflects around and makes all of these parts. Now it does work a little bit differently in trying to set it up and calibrate it. It's not quite as, um, it's a little more sensitive than FDM printing. You can really squish together that first layer, but if you do that with this, there's some other things to work on. So within this video, I'm gonna show you all the steps it takes to go from receiving your first Piopoli Moai and unboxing it, calibrating it, assembling it, and all the things in between. First, I'm gonna go over unboxing and assembly, which is really easy. Unboxing is pretty simple. It's flat packed, so you take out one layer, which includes the extrusions and the plates, and then you take out the next section, which is all the screws and power supplies. It's very well organized, and what I did after I had everything out is I laid it out neatly in a fashion called knolling, which is where you just lay everything out, and it looks neat, and you can see immediately, here's my screws, here's the extrusion, here's the side panels. And so when you're following the instructions, you can immediately turn, grab the part you need, and get back to building. So because of that, I was able to build this a lot quicker than the suggested um, build time. And it's a really easy kit. I've, I've never built a kit before. The Moai was the first one. And it's, it's just a bunch of extrusions and frames, pieces, and side panels, and a lot of sub-assemblies. So like most of the Z-axis is all one piece. You just bolt it together and you, you've built yourself a 3D printer. It's pretty easy. Um, there is one thing of note, is that I would say leave off either the right side panel, the left side panel, or both before you are ready to say that you're done calibrating, because you are gonna need to access the underside to make sure everything is working. On top of that, make sure that you do proper cable management, where you are zip tying cables away from the laser's path so you aren't going to have, um, what can happen is if, if a wire is in the way of the laser, you will see streaks where part of the print just didn't go. There's just a clear cut through the model because there was a wire in the way and the laser just couldn't cure any resin in that line. Just make sure you, sure you practice some um, good cable management when you're building this. Depending on if you're going to get a kit or fully assembled Piopoli Moai, you may or may not have the switch here. So this is just a small switch that cuts off the power to the laser if the door is open because there are regulations against shipping a piece of machinery that has a laser that does not turn off if the door is open. So the lock and key here is just here to make sure that the door doesn't open while you're printing or so that nobody's messing with it while there's a laser and resin and you know, you're tampering with the print. So it's just a mechanical thing. There's nothing electronic tied up to this. This is the only thing that's gonna, gonna turn off the power to the laser. If you have a kit, this isn't gonna be there and you can just open the door and see what's happening. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna test is power. You're gonna make sure that you've plugged it in and all of the connections on the inside are good and so when you first press the power button, this blue light will come on, otherwise that is off. Press the button, it takes a second, it'll move around a bit. You can, so it will try to raise the bed, it will lower the vat a bit and then raise it back up. Now you know power works. The screen comes on, so you've connected that well, and you can scroll through with this. And what you may not realize is that one click is select, but if you've gone too far and you wanna go back, double tap. So that's just a little, normally counterintuitive, normally there's like a back button, you just scroll up to and click, like on most 3D printers with LCDs, but in this case, double tap is back. When you receive your Moai, it should have the proper firmware installed with it, which means that the setup screen here is gonna have all the right settings. However, just to double check, I'm gonna go through and show you all the various settings. So scroll through the setup, and for each of them, it should be 360 for both X size and Y size, 100 for the X and Y deviation, 50 for smooth, 15 for Z motor speed, 60 for PM motor speed, and from here we can go to advanced settings with one tap, your laser power should be 59, 
X, Y speed set to four, Z reset position set to 1877, and then your PM reset position and Z follow should both be 100. It's really easy to just go back in here, scroll up, and change the setting to something different. So I'll change that back to 59, and then double tap to go back. We're back to the main menu. This next test is the galvanometer test, which is the, like I said, the part with the laser in the mirrors that makes the tool path. And this test is pretty easy. There's not a lot of actual work you have to do. There's first a sheet of paper that you're gonna need to print out this uh, diagram that just shows you clearly the actual tool, tool path that it's supposed to follow. So you're just gonna cut it out along the other lines. Make sure that if you're printing it, you're not scaling to fit the page because it is designed for, um, I believe, A4 size paper. If you're in the United States, we normally use letter size. So PDFs will try to shrink it. Um, just make sure it's not scaled to fit. Print it out. It should fit pretty perfectly within the vat. You may need to trim it a little bit. But once it's in there, you're gonna see that one side is, is um, either closer or farther than the other three sides. And that's the side that should be at the front. And then you're gonna put it in here and load the p-yuan-test.g code, which should be on the, the SD card included with your, with your MOI. But if it's not, you can go to Piopoli's website, go to their support and download that, put it on the SD card. You don't need to do any slicing. It's not gonna to try to print anything. It's not even gonna to try to change the layers. It's just gonna show, does the galvanometer work? What it's gonna do is it's going to do the normal startup procedure where it tilts the vat. So you wanna make sure still no resin in the vat. It'll lower this down, so make sure the build plate is not in here. It's just a screw, so you're gonna keep that unscrewed and out. It'll lower, and what you should see is that the laser is tracing a circle back and forth a couple times along the vat, and if it is, that means the X is working, the Y is working, and they're working in sync with each other. So the next thing we're gonna do is the leveling procedure. Now, piopoli has been updating it so that there is now two full steps for the leveling procedure. There is one that does it coarsely and then one more precisely, but you need to do one before the other. And they've done this where they are constantly updating and when they find new ways, they publish it and then you're able to do all these new steps to have a more precise and better machine. And the first way that you, we do it is that we go into the advanced settings and change Z reset position to 1880. It's already at 1880, to change it to 1879 and then back to 1880 and then go back to the main menu. And you want to make sure before you do all this that you have the build plate attached to the arm because this is all going to drop into the vat and you should see it press into it just slightly. And it does that because there's springs between the vat and the leveling screws. So if you see it move and it starts making noise that does not sound like proper noise for a 3D printer, turn it off. There's nothing weird when it levels and when it lowers. So if it's making bad sounds, just turn it off before you, you cause any damage to the printer. And like I said before, you should have left the side panels off so you can access the underside and you're gonna use the provided socket wrench to reach through and adjust the nylock nuts that attach to the, the screws with the springs on them. So when you're under there, you're gonna to wanna to loosen all of them. Loosen them all so that you can clearly see between the bottom of the nut and, and the underside of the metal plate so that all of them are loose enough where it's pushing into the, the build plate. The vat is pushing into the build plate. From there, what you're gonna do is you're going to tighten all of the nuts just enough where you can't fit a slip of paper between the nut and the metal plate. And that just means that they're all just slightly pulling down on it so it's not completely slamming into the vat. And once you do that, that is the, the basic way to do leveling. And from there, you're going to want to um, go back to the advanced settings and change your Z reset position to 1877, back to the main menu, and that's leveling procedure step one. So the next test is leveling the vat and build plate a little more accurately. So you're gonna need a set of calipers and you're gonna need the leveling test G code from Piopoli. Now that may be on the SD card, that may be something you just have to go to their site and download. It just depends on how recently you've gotten the printer. And the way this works is that the G code will print out four small cylinders. They're basically like a socket cap screw where there's a wider part and then it comes to a narrower cylinder. And they're all supposed to be 11 millimeters tall. They're designed to be 11 millimeters tall and each of them has a letter on top corresponding to that corner within the Piopoli edition of Cura. So 
you can actually see, okay, this, this one that came out from right here, that is A. And so you can measure it and see that, okay, A is 10.35 millimeters tall, which means that that corner is compressing 0.65 millimeters. And the optimal range you want this in is somewhere between 10.6 millimeters and 10.8 millimeters with 10.7 being the sweet spot. So you're going to take out that socket wrench and you're going to go underneath and you will tighten it if you want to increase the height of the, of the uh, cylinder and loosen it if you want to shrink it. And one full turn is 0.7 millimeters difference between the last print and the new one, just because the nuts have a 0.7 millimeter pitch. So if you print out these cylinders and it measures out 10.35, well, then you need to tighten it half a turn, which is 0.35 millimeters difference now, which means the next time you print it, it should be 10.7 millimeters. And you're gonna do this for all four of the cylinders and try them all out, and then you'll see if this second batch actually has everything measuring about 10.7 millimeters. And if for some reason one of the corners doesn't have the, the cylinder there, and instead you just have a flat disc in the bottom of your vat, um, gently peel that off and inspect whether it just didn't stick to the, to the build plate or if it's, uh, there was some other failure that happened. So the final test is a test print. And the supplied model is this small ring and then either it's gonna be on the SD card or you're gonna to have to go to Piopoli and download it. But it's gonna load and it's just gonna print in the, the back left corner. Uh, and if it prints successfully, great. Your printer is calibrated and it's ready to go. If you notice any issues with the model, like half of the ring printed and the other half is just a small silhouette left in the bottom of the vat, well, what may have happened is that the ring wasn't getting enough exposure from the laser, so it wasn't curing, and it just made a weak print, and the forces supplied by the, the tilting of the vat was too much for it, and so it broke. In that case, try increasing the laser power one at a time and reprinting until it starts working, and that, that is the recommended way to solve that problem. Or if you notice there's a clear line through the print, that would mean that there's some wire that is in the way of the laser path, and you should get some zip ties and correct that. Just take off the panel, move it around, and cinch down those, those zip ties. Now, if there's no ring at all, that means that it, it either didn't adhere to the vat, or the build plate, or it had some other failure. So in that case, make sure that your laser powers are what I've described, or make sure that the move speed is set correctly, and even try slowing down your first layer because that does give it more exposure. So it's able to cure a lot harder, a lot quicker than if it were just uh, at a normal speed. So sometimes I will do 10 slow layers. Sometimes I'll do one, depending on how much of a surface area I have sticking for the first bit. And even one way that I solved the problem was using the supplied spatula to scuff the build plate just enough to give just a little more bite to some of these really flat bottom prints. So they had just that much more suction to it. And it's an additional item, but what I found helpful is to use the supplied spatula to lift one corner of the brim and get one of those really thin spatulas, the ones that are almost just a thin piece of metal, like a shim, and just glide that underneath the print. That's how I was able to get this lattice cube off of the Moai. So I just wedged up a corner and slid it out and it just came off one piece. I didn't have to chip at it, didn't have to whack at it. It was really easy. So hopefully if you're watching this video and you're expecting to receive a Moai in the mail or you already have a Moai, this is giving you some good ideas of what exactly it's going to be like to calibrate it, to get it running. And as for actually printing with it or for generating support, designing for it, hauling out parts, we're gonna be doing plenty of more videos on, well, here's Phil, but how do we make them hollow? How do you make a model not need to take this much resin to print? And it does save you both time and money to do that. So there, there are definitely other ways that aren't really normal with FDM 3D printing that are pretty normal with SLA. And it's just not intuitive if you're moving from FDM to SLA. So hope that all helps and uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.